All right, let's get started here. You know, we have so much content today. So welcome, welcome to the session around a deep dive on the workspace intelligence. I have to warn that it's gonna be a little bit more technical in nature. Everything you saw in the keynote today, we won't have pretty slides. We're gonna have deep down technical architecture. Um, so hopefully you guys will appreciate this thing, right? And, and we'll go through a live demo through the micro app builder as well. What's behind the scenes, how you build micro apps, and what goes behind some of the, the cool things you saw in the keynote today. Wait, All we're right, doing just, a live demo? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so and before we get started, again, this is the, the legal slide, right? Um, the product, not shipping, not GA today, but you know, coming in later this year. So some of the feature functionality you may see may or may not ship, or may ship more than that. So just wanna make sure the legal slide's there. Uh, legal guys always tell us to put this slide on. All right, so from, who are we guys, right? So from my perspective, I've been with Citrix for over 17 years. So I started when I was 16, and you know, no, no, this was my, but this is true that this was my first job out of college. It was supposed to be a small gig and then do some more fun, but 17 years later, here I am, still rocking the job, and I love, love working at Citrix. And it's absolutely every single year, we just keep changing and keep pushing the technology. And my colleague Omar here, you want yeah. to tell? My name is uh, Omar Elnigar, and I have a similar love story, but it's purely for micro apps. So <laughs> I was actually the first customer of our micro app technology uh, back when I was running research and development for a hedge fund. And I joined Sappho as our director of product to finish the mission. And I must say it was a lot more fun being a customer rather than a vendor. But thankfully, uh, I've been a part of every one of our customer experiences, uh, back from when it was just a vision through to a successful enterprise software startup. And now here at Citrix, where we're trying to scale this solution to a billion users worldwide. Uh, excited to be a part of the journey with you all. Yeah, great. So here's my request, right? So for next hour or so, right, I know you all probably know Citrix inside out, which means virtual apps and desktops, right? But for next an hour or so, you know, just keep an open mind and think beyond virtual apps and desktops. I'm talking about apps which are, will be SaaS and maybe native apps. We all use every day, and we might virtualize them and deliver them to our customers today in a very different format. But this session is not about virtual apps and desktops, right? This is about the future of work, and in a sense, how do we as IT admins and, and strategists think beyond just virtual apps and desktops? And what's, how is the world changing around us, and how can we provide a really different user experience to the end user? That's, that's the end story here, right? And so what inspired us is our everyday consumer experience, right? And so if I look around what happens in our everyday consumer experience, we use apps like Facebook, Twitter, we have Siri and, and Google Assistant. And these things really, really make our lives easy, our workflows much simpler. We are used to using feeds and Facebook and Twitter has trained us, right, on how to look at our feeds. And uh, you know, some, some of you might be even using it right now on your Twitter and your phone, <laughs> just checking it out. But you know, the interesting thing about feeds in Facebook and Twitter is that they are personalized, they are based in the order of priority, and they're just for you based on your context and even your location, right? It knows the trending topic based on your in Atlanta right now or presenting you the right information just at the right time. And when we look at some of the workflows which have come into our consumer life these days around series shortcuts. And my, my kids love using shortcuts around brushing their teeth. You put that timer on, they do it. Or I love shortcuts on how much time will it take me to get to work and just press one thing and it just tells me or texting my life, I've left my work, right? Simple things, it's, I use it every day. They're training us on how to use these micro apps, per se. And then virtual assistants, like Google Assistants and you know, others, and Alexa and Siri and Cortana, they're really helping us in our everyday work life and consumer life. Hey, leave work now, or leave now for your next meeting, 
or you would be late because the traffic looks busy, and things like that. Really, really simple ideas. And what happens is this, all these consumer tech is really pushing digital transformation. Right? If you look about what's going on in, in everyday consumer life, not just the four examples I give you, but from apps we use every day, from apps we use to order our food using Uber Eats, the apps we use to book our flights, and simple things which are just built in, we expect them to just work, right? And if I look at what's happening and how the industry is going to evolve, is I just look at my kids. Right? And, and we have an Alexa in our living room. And the other day, I caught my nine-year-old asking math questions to Alexa. They're like, hey, you can't do all these things right, right now. So the, the technology keeps pushing. But I just fear for them when they come to work or when they will join workforce someday. This is, this is what's reality, right? For some of us, we go to these conferences, we look at all this cool stuff, but the reality is, you know, we are all stuck with this enterprise tech, which is different. It almost feels like we live in, we live a you know, twin life. I can't have, tell you just how many customers I'll walk into that are gonna roll out that projector on a push cart and try to find the VGA to HDMI dongle yeah. <laughs> just so we can get a presentation no, going. No, absolutely right. And it, you know, I'm not, again, this is, some of the reality is, we'll have to have the right balance. So again, some customer conversations I just had a few months ago, customers asking me for Windows 2008 support uh, for virtual apps and like, and I, you hear those things out and like, you're talking about intelligent workspaces on the other hand, right? and it's, it's, it's tough, and so I understand. But, but if you don't change, that's my whole point, is if you don't change, someone else is changing. And the industry is getting disrupted every single day. There is a new disruptor coming to you, you know, who's going to change your industry. And if you don't change, you're going to be really, really hard to find a good talent who's going to come and work for you guys. And it's not just IT. And here's another example, right? And if I, if I look at, and, and nothing against Concur here, but if I look at some of the notifications, I even get my enterprise apps, and this is supposed to be a consumer app. I get all these notifications in my email, I get notifications on my iPhone, I get notifications on my iPad, but nothing really tells me, just press this button to approve this expense. Right? I get all these things. Right? And, and in the consumer life, I've been trained to use apps which are really, really simple. But in my enterprise life, things are just hard. I have to context switch every two minutes. Literally, I get all these emails which are not in priority. Every day, I'm sure just like me, you guys wake up, you have 50 emails in your inbox, five are spam emails, four are emails you don't really care about, there's one email from your boss which you really wanted to attend and answer first. <laughs> like, how do you get to that information right away? And how do you approve things or do your task in, a, in an order which really matters to you, right? And so the problem statement here which we are really going after is, is really simple. If we look around, we have just too many apps, too many passwords, too many devices we all work on. And we have to remember every single thing in which app do I have to go and get my work done. And if I look around, I just have files all around, my apps all around. There is too much searching going on. There is too much context switching, too many notifications. There is nothing which helps me, guides, and automate my work. I mean, what if we can provide a better experience? What if there was, and I'm gonna use the keynote example here, what if there was this green button experiences? What if there was a simpler way of just going in and pushing the green button? In this example of the printer, which is very classic, like I walk up to our, even at Citrix, you walk up to a printer, you look at all these buttons, and all you just wanted to hit is press copy. Right? So things which are designed for you know, probably just one person in my whole floor, which is our EA or our assistants, you know, which helps out everyone of us, but we all just press one button. What if the things were simple? So what we're gonna do in this you know, session today is just walk through again another use case, and maybe we'll take an example of day in the life of a salesperson right, today versus versus the marketing person you saw in the keynote. And just explain the same story, but then right after that, 
Omar is going to jump into the deep dive architecture on how these things are made and how we have built this architecture, and then go into the micro app builder details on how to build some of these apps. So as a salesperson, you know, today my experience is I have to open up my Salesforce or whatever, you know, you can, you can use any other tools like Dynamics or something else, and I'm always on the road, right? But I have to enter notes, enter all these sales exceptions, enter my trip reports, and maybe I'm driving around, so I have to use another app called MyLiQ or MyLage or whatever those apps you use, enter all that information, enter task, enter sales exceptions. Maybe if I'm a sales manager, then I have to approve things and, and do all these things. And when I'm on, the, I'm on the road, has every single mobile app built around my experience? The answer is no. They're, you know, again, you have to find things, do things. What if there was a simpler way of navigating and doing my things, which were easier? So Omar, you're gonna show us how to do those things easier? Uh, I'd love to. Today, we're gonna go through a day in the life of Pepper Potts, uh -huh. our VP of sales for uh, Stark Industries over here. And the first thing Pepper does is log into her workspace, which is hopefully gonna be the launch pad for everything that she wants to do. And the important thing here is that this is your classic Citrix workspace. If Pepper needs to go and take care of some detailed knowledge work, she can still come over here and launch her virtual app and desktop. But what we're trying to do is rethink her workflows in terms of these micro apps. And you know, I started my last presentation with a definition here. To me, a micro app is a streamlined use case from a complex enterprise application. So it's not trying to rebuild something like success sectors. It's saying, OK, let's see how we can get Pepper to be more engaged with that system. The first card in my activity feed in the middle of the screen here is a notification for Pepper that a new course is available for registration that's relevant to her. Maybe in some other system, Pepper has identified that she wants to improve her leadership skills. And so the course for leading a global environment is presented to her. She can click on that card to jump into this detail blade over here read a bit more about the course, and most importantly, click this register button at the bottom of the screen and be done. Yeah, so great. So she didn't have to remember the URL. She didn't have to log in, maybe a separate login and a password to go there and do these things. There was no bookmarks needed. She, was, she could have been anywhere on any device. That's it. It's not even remembering the system that's driving that. I mean, I think at Citrix we're using Saba or something, yeah. success factors. All Pepper cares about is registering for the course. Yeah. That's it. And we're trying to design these experiences to really focus on what Pepper's trying to do. So the next task she wants to do is come and you know, register some PTO for a, a trip with Tony Stark. So she clicks on this request PTO tile, and this is a different kind of micro app. It wasn't driven by some event. It's something that's initiated by Pepper's action here. And what does she actually need to request PTO? She needs to know how many days she has remaining, the start date of her trip, the end date over here, and then enter in Bali with Tony. Again, click that Submit button right there, and it's done. That's, that's great. So let's take another example if, let's say, Stark Industry acquires another company, and they were using a completely different system, mm. HR system, to request PTO. So if you're onboarding those employees in, all they have to do is just do this simple thing. So your m and agility becomes really, really fast. Right? You're just becoming faster and faster. You're integrating all these apps much faster. They don't have to learn a brand new system. That's it. I mean, we think of this as a more human-centric experience. Your users don't really care what's driving this back end. And frankly, you don't want to change it. Yeah. To rip and replace those <clears throat> systems is really cumbersome. But if we can provide a better interface for doing that work, everybody's happy. And it could be something like requesting PTO, but you know, we see here that the next card in Pepper's activity feed is a new expense report for approval from SAP Concur. Now, Pepper already knows that Gina has been working on this consulting project. 300 bucks looks okay. She hits that approve button and in one click is completely done. That is a streamlined workflow right there, where in one click she could take care of something instead of having to launch another system, log in, find that record, et cetera, et cetera. Now, not every piece of work is gonna be that simple. So the next card in her activity feed is to approve a $12 million contract from Salesforce. Now again, this is the workspace experience. So over here in her recent apps, she still has the ability to go and launch Salesforce using Citrix Access Control. And she'll be SSO'd into uh, a secure experience here with our watermark and all the other protections that Citrix offers. But let's try to rethink that workflow. 
as an administrator, I can decide what is the smallest amount of information that I'm willing to allow, uh, you know, to present to Pepper and allow her to take action. And if she clicks into this card over here, it'll launch the detail blade on the right, and we'll have a list of the line items that go into this contract. And most likely, Pepper's been part of this deal from early on, and now has the information she needs to hit this approve button. We're going to empower her to do that action in this context, uh, you know, as, as administrators. And it's really about trying to rethink the workflows. Everything that you have in workspace is available to you over here, like Citrix files, but let's rethink how Pepper wants to interact with this in material. There's a new sales presentation, Stark Sales, and we need Pepper to comment on it. So let's just drop this card right into her activity feed and let her launch Citrix files right then and there, put in her comment, and then be back into her workspace experience. It's cohesive, right? There's one place for her that has access to every one of these different systems. And now we get to think of better ways to present this information to Pepper. She finishes her, her meeting, and she's uh, moving to a new building, and she wants to do some work on her mobile device. Well, the good news is that everything that has been defined as a micro app is available to your users in this mobile context. For every one of these micro apps, there's 100% parity, where she can come in here and drill down for more details or take action right then and there. But when we think of rethinking workflows, it's not just about taking a desktop experience and making it available on mobile, even if it is a streamlined micro app. Here, we have a new employee joining Pepper's team. And you know, traditionally, this is something where an email is sent out to 50 people, and 25 of them are going to reply all and, and you know, congratulate this person for joining. But social media has shown us that really what you want to do is just show support with something like a like button over here. Now, that's great. We're going to take that out of that email workflow and start uncluttering those inboxes. But what if Pepper wants to get more details about Maya? Are we going to force her to remember where our company directory is? Well, no. Here's where we're going to use Citrix virtual assistance technology to present Pepper with a new way to retrieve information. So after I click that virtual assistant in the upright, I get this dialog where, with a natural language interface, I can type in, who is Maya Cooper? And our natural language processor is going to route that intent to the micro app to provide all that information to Pepper right in line over here. And when we think of micro apps, we don't just think of users consuming them in the Citrix workspace. We want you to be able to consume them from wherever you do work. So the same virtual assistant technology is available over here in Microsoft Teams. I have a chat going with the Citrix workspace bot, and I can come over here and say, you know, view my expense reports. And again, the Citrix Virtual Assistant will take that utterance, translate it into an intent that I can pass to the micro app, and then deliver that micro information to you right here. So that's our end user experience. Yeah. That's what we think uh, Pepper's Day could be like. So this is great, right? I mean, if, so another use case that I can, I can think about is, imagine if, I, if you're onboarding brand new employees and they're just coming on board. Like, how much time does an employee onboarding use case take typically? Six months, eight months, or more, right? What if this experience was available to them day one? They join in, they know exactly the things they need access to, right, away which apps they need. They don't have to really figure out a new HR system, a new CRM system, a new ERP system. Like, you can name it, right? They can be productive right away. And more and more workforce is getting more remote. So they don't have you know, their peer who sits right next to them to go and ask these questions. And I agree. You, you, you're onboarding more and more contractors, right? You don't have a, maybe a contractor's coming on board for a year. You don't want to waste six months just onboarding them. So this is a great use case for employee onboarding. You shouldn't have to train people on how to request yeah, PTO. Exactly. Right? This is something that should just be natural. Now, how do we make this experience happen? <laughs> Before I get into the product itself, I do want to talk to you a bit about the architecture underlying it. Now, I want to start with a functional architecture. What are we actually doing with this product? The first thing that I think is really important is that we have the ability to integrate with almost any backend system. You see at the top there, we have this idea of a generic web service, meaning that any service that you expose to us as a JSON REST endpoint, for example, we can consume and drive micro apps off of. And similarly, we can write back to your services using that same connector. But to get people up and running even faster, we've established really secure integrations with a variety of, the, of your most common apps. And I'll show you how important uh, that out-of-the-box experience is shortly. Now, our product is actually a platform for building these micro apps. 
That MicroApp service that's hosted by Citrix Cloud Services uses three really interesting pieces of technology to drive this experience. First, we have our event engine, which utilizes Sappho's patented uh, Extract, Transform, and Notify technology, ETN. Now, this is our language of change that lets you understand data in motion. How is something changing over time? When is there a new record available to me? Or when is there an updated record? Maybe an approval that's been assigned to somebody else. Or maybe you want to see if something hasn't changed. If something hasn't been approved in seven days, I'm going to need to escalate it. Now, once you've defined those events, then we have our page builder, which is drag and drop. It's a no-code, low-code environment, really easy to use, and I'll show you that in just a second. And the third really interesting thing here is our patented consolidated identity technology, which allows us to understand who you are as a user across every one of those systems that we connect to. Now, the last thing that we do over here is allow you to consume these micro apps on whatever endpoint is supported by Citrix Workspace. And that library is expanding every day. We start you off in that workspace experience because we think that's where you start your day, but we want to empower you in whatever context fits your use case. If you want to work in Teams or Slack, we we're happy to allow you to do that. And in our talk earlier today, uh, SYN 101, we talked a little bit about our virtual assistant technology and how we're integrating uh, with Alexa and, and Teams and Lewis. And I think Christian Riley and James Bolpin took that a bit further in Synergy 130, uh, if you want to reach out and find those videos later. Now let's dive a little bit deeper here. We have our micro app service, which is hosted by Citrix Cloud Services. And now we want to see how we would actually drive a notification from one of those source systems. The first thing that happens is our micro app service needs to communicate with that system of record. And the first step isn't a direct communication here. We're actually going to use our data integration layer and our credential wallet to securely retrieve the API credentials for communicating with that system. This is a critical step, and I'll explain that architecture in detail a little bit further. Now, our data integration layer is really just a pass-through. It knows how to communicate with every one of those systems of record and stream the data into our micro app service. And you see in the upper right corner there, I've underlined uh, that this is using a service account credential to pull data from the system of record. This is very important for scale services or, or for uh, you know, scalability here. We use that service account to pull information for all the users that might receive micro apps so that we can uh, be processing these events in the background instead of when users log into the app. Now, the micro app service is what's actually going to identify that an event has happened that's relevant to your end users. And it's not going to send it directly to the users. It's first going to send it to Citrix Analytics. And the important thing here is that Citrix Analytics is actually going to score that event and understand who it's relevant to. That makes it so that when you open up your Citrix workspace, that feed has been prioritized based on the things that are most important to you as an end user. And the last bit is that notification service knows how to talk to every single one of those endpoints. Mm -hmm. Now, the important thing here is that our platform, we like to say, is build once and deploy anywhere. You want to focus your efforts on how to integrate with those backend systems and how to define the micro apps and events that are going to be useful to your users. And our platform is going to enable you to very, very easily pass that through to all those different endpoints. Now, as a user, once I receive a notification, what's actually going to happen? The first thing is, let's say I open up that detail blade. We're going to go and fetch a lot more data from that micro app cache to give me the information that I need to take a deeper action. That was like when Pepper opened up that Salesforce contract to see those different line items. Now, this is a really important point because when we send a notification to you as an end user, that's actually out of bands. If we put it into Slack, we lose control over it. And you may not want to put a lot of sensitive information in that notification. We'll give you the flexibility to put whatever information you want in that notification and then force your users to authenticate and pull the rest of the data for that detail blade in this next step. Now, eventually, Pepper is going to hit that button to approve. And the interesting thing here is that when we send that approval back to the system of record, we're going to use Pepper's own credentials. We're not going to use that service account. And this is important because we want the system of record to have an audit log that reflects that it was Pepper Pots that took the, the action, not some generic API. Now, the great thing here is that this is actually a seamless experience for Pepper because we've already done all the SSO integration as a part of Workspace. Yeah, I think this is a really important point Every action the end user takes is in the context of the end user itself. So all your audit logs, whether it's written in the application itself or in Citrix Cloud, they're in the context of the end user. 
so you can have a, you know logging in and checking it out. Exactly right. Now the next step is we actually need to update our micro app cache here. Let's say Pepper was just one approval in a long process. Maybe it's going to send the next approval to the next user. And so we want to go and refresh that data here. And once we have that refreshed data, we're going to send the update to Pepper along with confirmation that her action was successful. Now I think it's really important to talk about data security here. I think the first and most important thing to talk about is this idea that that micro app service is going to be single tenant. We're going to have an isolated uh, data store for every customer with per tenant database level encryption keys and per tenant database credentials. Now this doesn't mean that the entire service is single tenant. In order to scale a solution for a billion users worldwide, we need to use uh, some multi-tenant compute. But we take this very seriously, and uh, every one of those multi-tenant services has customer partitions, and any data that is at rest is encrypted with a multi-tenant encryption key. Now, we are trying very hard to minimize that data at risk. So if that data integration layer, for example, has no data at rest. It's purely passing data through from that system of record through to the micro app service. And as far as that credential wallet goes, again, this is heavily secured. We're using a cloud key management store with non-exportable keys. Everything is encrypted with AES-256, and there are per-tenant keys here. Additionally, all the traffic that's happening within Citrus Cloud Services is very, very secure. We're utilizing RSA key pairs, a trusted service identity store, and signed single-use use tokens. And this will be certified for SOC 2 uh, at the time we go GA. Now, the last thing I want to mention architecturally is that uh, all external traffic is also heavily secured. So when we're communicating with uh, the Citrix workspace, for example, we're using our proprietary Auth and Auth-C protocol, which has been in use by Citrix virtual apps and desktops for over 10 years. And whenever we're communicating with a system of record, we're trying to use the API that that system of record has established. Concur knows exactly how it wants people to be communicating with it programmatically, and we conform to their standards to make sure that everything is auditable and, and compliant. Now let's get into the product itself. Yeah, let's do it. Over here, I'm logged into my Citrix Cloud console, just like normal, but we have a new service available to us, micro apps. I'm going to click in here to manage my micro apps. And what I want to do with you today is add a new integration with Salesforce. So we see I have this nice getting started screen. And when I click in here, it's going to show me a list of my active integrations. Let's add a new one. So here's a list of our most common connectors. Again, our JSON and ODA to JSON connectors are used for those generic web services. But for now, we're going to move ahead with Salesforce. Forgive me while I type in credentials very carefully. Have you prayed to the demo gods? <laughs> All right. We'll note this is a sandbox. And add this integration. Now, what's happening here is not just a connection being established with Salesforce, but we're actually creating micro apps for our users right out of the box. Ooh, assuming that it worked. Let's see. Type in your password correctly. You know? Demo Day Blues. Let's try one more time and see if we can get it going. So while it's trying to see if I entered in the password correctly this time, it's also trying to go and create a variety of out-of-the-box micro apps. And these micro apps are the use cases that we've identified across other customers that are going to get you up and running quickly. We know that when you go and add a service like Concur, oh, two in a row. All right. How about we, we look at a pre-configured micro app? <laughs> That's not a bad idea. We actually have some demo environments over here as well, so we're just going to have to do that default, unfortunately. So for the third time, we're going to go ahead and add those <laughs> out-of-the-box micro apps over here. 
So we understand what the most common use cases are for those systems that we have uh, pre-configured. And we want to help you be up and running without having to build these from scratch. So now that I have my Salesforce integration added, we'll see that I have some very uh, sort of common configurations over here. The first thing is how often do we actually want to synchronize with Salesforce? And maybe every day we're going to do a full sync, and every hour we're going to do just an incremental sync to see what's changed. Now, if I dive into the Salesforce My Opportunities app, we're going to see two events here. The first one is if a brand new opportunity has been assigned to you, and the other one is if an existing opportunity has been assigned to you as a user. And if I was going to add more events, this is where we can start to define uh, what might be relevant to our users. Do I want to see new records, change records, deleted records? Do I want to uh, do a periodic report on something? Now, if I dive into this opportunity assigned to you event, we see our event console. And this is where we break down these events into the, the what, when, why, who, and how. The what is we're looking for a change record in our Salesforce opportunity table. The when is whenever we're going to synchronize with Salesforce. And what's really interesting here is the why. Why would we push a card to one of our users? Now, your standard comparison engine is going to let you say, I want to see if this value is equal to, less than, or greater than something else. But if we left it there, then every time we pulled Salesforce, we would be generating a new card in the feed. And what we designed at Sappho was what we called the language of change. I want to understand when this value becomes something else. Or in the case of this owner email field, I want to see if it changes at all. And if you were going to do something for uh, an escalation, if something hadn't been approved in seven days, I want to see if this field does not change. This is really important for defining your events at a granular level so that you're not overwhelming your users with a bunch of noise. Now, the next step over here is who do we actually want to notify? And in this case, let's go ahead and notify the user whose Active Directory email matches the new owner email of this opportunity. This is a bit of that consolidated identity technology that I was telling you about before, where we're trying to create a mapping between all these different systems of record. Now, as opposed to just notifying a single user, we could alternatively notify all the users who have access to this app or some set of user groups. So let's say that I was using my Active Directory to authenticate my users. I could actually use those AD groups to determine who's going to be receiving what events. Now, down here at the bottom is the how. How do I want to notify my end users? And you know, if I configure this environment with Teams ahead of time, if I wanted to push the notifications there, it would be as easy as flipping that switch. And every one of these endpoints can be configured independently. So I have a couple of questions here. Sure. So first of all, no code required so far. That's right. There was pre-configured connector. And if we could enter our password and security <laughs> key correctly, it would have added the, the whole integration and cards correctly. The micro apps. For the most popular SaaS apps, will be built in, shipped, and if there's a new micro app a mm. customer says, I want to build, they can just use this editor you know, and just play with it and create one. Exactly right. We think that this is an environment that is useful to people who aren't really engineers. Of course, an engineer could do it. But we want to engage your users that understand how structured data works, people that are using your BI tools and building really complex spreadsheets. Those are the people that could come into this feed card, for example, and start to tweak these based on their needs. So over here, we have an opportunity that's been assigned to me as my user. Uh, but I could really quickly just come in here and say, hello, Synergy. Or more interesting is come in and insert a variable from that underlying system. So I don't need to know exactly how the Salesforce API works to be able to understand that I want to come in here and pull in this expected revenue field for the opportunity and format it as a currency. Now, what's great here is, as a part of our language of change, we understand how this data is changing over time. So not only are you able to put in the current value of this variable, but also the previous variable before this event was triggered, or the change in that data field. So if I want to see that this is increased by a million dollars or 20%, I can do this here as well. No, excuse me. Now, once I have configured this, the last bit over here is what action do I want my users to take? 
And if I come over to one of my other apps, I think it'll be interesting to show you, excuse me for a second, that we can actually put those approval buttons right on the cards themselves. And this is something that you need to configure as an administrator. You need to sort of understand when you want your users uh, approving things quickly versus uh, drilling in for more details. Uh, it appears we don't have any action buttons on this one either. But let's say a user clicked in that card uh, to get more details. I'll jump back to my Salesforce opportunities one for a second. And I just want to show you what that drag and drop page builder looks like for uh, when a user launches this, this detail blade. So over here, again, I have the ability uh, to just come in and really quickly drop in some text fields and tie them to an underlying data source. In this case, we're looking for that opportunity, tie it to maybe that owner's email field, and have that available to us right there. Now I'm gonna try one last thing over here. I wanna see where I might have a good action button for you. Let me go into my page builder for the approvals app. And on the approve account page, we'll see at the bottom I have these approve and reject buttons. And when I click on these, we'll see that the action over here is actually making an API call back to concur. It's using this approved Salesforce object API call, and we can configure it with whatever parameters are relevant here. In this case, we're gonna use the work item ID, but if you had added your own generic web service, you could use pretty much uh, any parameters that you chose. This is what we mean by having built a platform for generating these micro apps. You can always do it if you had your own custom homegrown app and if it had a you know, good API system, you can easily integrate with them. Exactly. Nothing here is hard coded. Everything can be configured uh, according to your needs. Now there's one step that I did there uh, that actually was not successful that I think is very important. That moment when you enter in those API credentials is a very, very sensitive moment. At this point, you've exposed your service to Citrix Cloud and, and we take that very seriously. And we know that you do as well. And there are two parts to it. First, we're going to help you configure those API accounts on your systems. We have uh, extensive documentation that will show you how those accounts need to be permissioned. And more importantly, we have documentation that's gonna help you with your security team to understand what those API accounts can actually do. But the good news here is that we've been doing this for a few years now, and we are very, very experienced with helping you be successful. And Vishal, I think you wanna talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so, you know, during Keynote, you had a great customer example on CBS. Safa has been around for a while. They have a number of customers in production. And then here's another customer case study who actually went through this micro web journey. Right? And, and it's amazing to see some of the results. Again, when they started this journey, I think the number one problem they had was just lowering the cost of the BI system. Just employee onboarding uh, was the number one challenge for them. Uh, the other challenge um, was around just simplifying work for their on-prem apps and for their SaaS apps, right? And you, can, you can really look at this data and see, well, there are customers running this in production, things are working, and what Citrix has been trying to do is really integrate all that work, all the hard work software did, into the workspace, right? So we are constantly moving forward and pushing the boundaries for our customers. Now, what does this mean for me? I mean, most of you guys have spent like, hours and hours learning virtual apps and desktops, implementing virtual apps and desktops, and you know, some of you may have implemented our endpoint management products or even content collaboration projects, maybe Netscalers, right? Um, so what does this mean for you guys? Where is Citrix really going, and how do you keep up? So, so number one for me is to start exploding and learning around these things. Your apps and your desktops, they're still really, really relevant in the Citrix world or in this new workspace world. But it just becomes a feed into this new workspace experience. They're still there. You're still pushing your virtual apps and desktops. Omar launched a desktop or virtual apps. Right? And even Netscalers, you're just launching your native SaaS apps and all those things. They're still there. 
but we are really changing and giving you more power to break down those applications into micro apps and providing your users more flexibility. Now imagine your middle manager or even senior managers in your company. How much more flexibility and ease would they have if they had some, a feed like this on just doing simple things? So maybe you can start with simpler things, right? And then grow and grow and grow. I bet this is going to be a pull. And then you won't be able to keep up with the number of micro apps. And number two, I think even from your career perspective and just from overall perspective for which laps and desktop admins and senior leaders in this room right now, just get involved more with employee experience and productivity initiatives. These initiatives are happening in your company. You just have to find right people, right line of business owners, and work with them and show them what's possible. And then finally, this is, you know, there's this big buzzwords around digital transformation. You know, you know, maybe the your office, like there's a digital transformation office. There's a, there's these days, there's even chief digital officers and so on. But at the end of the day, what they are really looking for is leaders like you who can really influence and drive employee productivity. I mean, this is, from my perspective, this is, again, another chance for you to showcase what's possible and be more influential. And then finally, as you can see, these new skills are easy to learn. You don't have to be a Salesforce expert. You don't have to be a programmer expert. You can just start exploring, learning these new things, integrations. Start with one app, couple of apps. But this just brings in huge, huge value to this thing. Can you imagine a feed like this for your execs? Right? I think this is, this is what the power of new intelligent workspace is. Now, there's a, more details and more webinars coming in near future. There's a QR code. You're gonna, you know, when you take a picture, it's gonna, you know, make you land on this landing page. There's data sheets and more technical briefs. We're just starting to doing all these things before we actually productize and GA it, right? And and if you want to do a beta program, contact your sales or your partners. They know exactly how to put you into the beta program. Now, before you leave today, you know, a couple of things, right? So there is another deep dive session. Um, on Thursday on how to build these on the micro app builder itself, right? Um, it's by Jay Tomlin, amazing speaker. Um, and, um, you know, we are doing a repeat one later on. But there's, again, how to move from storefront to workspace is going to be there. And then absolutely please fill out surveys and results. But before you leave, actually, we have something special for you guys. We have two Citrix workspace T-shirts here, and we're going to have a small quiz Right? And so Citrix employees can't participate, but if you, if you are in the audience, and just, just to test, there's a pop quiz, if you are paying attention or not, we're going to ask you two simple questions. And these are large t-shirts. So question number one, I will ask, and maybe you can ask the more technical one. Sure. And, uh, the one, first one, and then you know, whoever answers first, just raise your hand, and we'll just let them answer, or you can come up to the mic and answer this. So all the micro apps we are building, True or false, can they only be consumed inside Workspace app? All these micro apps will be available to you in tools like Microsoft Teams and in future possibly Slack or email. True or false, which one? Oh, right there, actually, I saw that hand first. Yeah, correct, sir. This t-shirt's for you then. All right, second question, you want to ask? All right, so the data cache for your micro apps, is it single tenant or multi-tenant? Ooh, that's a hard one. That's right. Ooh, correct. So you have the second T-shirts. So before you fill out the surveys, again, sir, both of you, remember you got T-shirts. <laughs> All right. So finally, again, rating the session is really important. And let us know what more technical content, what more things can we help you um, guide through as you start to try these things and tech previews and so on as these things come in, in second half of the year. What do you need from Citrix so that we can make you more successful? Right. And then finally, you know, tweet about these sessions if you liked it. And uh, you know, really appreciate everyone coming in here. We're going to hang out here for a couple more minutes. Come in, ask questions. Where we are, you know, hopefully he's the more technical one. So hard one questions for you. And uh, we'll try and answer as many as we can. Thank you again for coming. Thanks a lot.